I love backpacking. So cool. But sometimes it sucks. It's gonna really suck. These are some of the most valuable tips I could ever give you because you will encounter these. Ah, the ultralight trap. Don't fall into it by choosing gear solely based on weight. Choosing the right gear for each trip is very important. I always say that planning a backpacking trip is like planning a wedding. You put in tons of preparation, time, and money. You want it to be perfect, and if something goes bad, you can always bail. Although it's been proven that if you bail on your wedding, you're actually way more likely to get mauled by a cougar. <coughs> of course, the lighter backpack is gonna feel better while hiking, but don't sacrifice too many conveniences or your camp experience will be one to remember for the wrong reasons. While packing, weigh out your gear individually so you know where the bulk of your load is. If you have multiple options of gear to bring, think about how much advantage the heavier items bring you. How much time are you actually going to be using an item for, and is it worth the sacrifice of bringing a lighter, possibly crappier version? Let's say you have a two pound stove and a two ounce stove. You're only using that for like, what, dinner, maybe breakfast? couple minutes a day. Let's say you have a two pound sleeping pad and a two ounce sleeping pad. Unrealistic, I know, but going lighter on something like this will affect you much more because you're using it all night long. Moral, don't sacrifice quality and weight on things that you're gonna be using the most. Instead, slip your heavier items in your unsuspecting friend's backpack. Along with a few rocks, you know, hey, he didn't give you any gas money for that last trip. Having an exact number on my pack has been super helpful. It can also let you know how many more beers you can squeeze in. I don't know if I need to say it, but it's pretty common knowledge that the number of beers you bring is directly related to how much fun you're going to have. How you doing, Bryce? Sleepy. Yeah? I can pass out. I also recommend getting a scale like this to weigh out your pack at the trailhead. 17 pounds, 9 ounces. Food, water, everything. I've been doing this long enough to know what a good weight for me is. Even though your pack feels light in the parking lot, it might not feel that good on day three. Beginner backpackers might think that because you're in a tent, you and your gear are going to stay dry. This is not a guarantee. Getting a tight pitch is key in non-freestanding tents like trekking pole tents. You'll have more room inside for you and your gear to stay away from the wet condensation on the walls because yeah, you'll have that. You guys ever get your breakfast out in the morning, you got your bowl and your cereal, and you reach in for the milk, and you're expecting it to be a full gallon, but as you lift with all your force, you slam it into the roof of the fridge because it was empty. That doesn't have anything to do with this video, but it's weird. You can create a barrier with your pack or your shoes so that if you roll around in your sleeping bag at night, you won't touch the wetness. Also, don't forget about tent sag, especially trekking pole tents that require equal tension for a good pitch. Remember this next time you go out hiking with your buddy, you know, because no one likes seeing a pair of saggy tents. If you're having tent problems, I feel bad for you, son. I got 99 problems, but my pitch ain't one. Evening dew can also make your tent sag, so make sure you retighten your lines before you get in for the night. If you wake up in a rainstorm and your tent is literally like laying on your face, man up, get outside and fix it. It's tempting to be a little bitch and go back to bed, but it's essential that your sleeping bag stays dry, so keeping it off of the wet walls is a must. A roof over your head and your warmth are the two things you need the most. No matter what happens, if you have a dry place to curl up in your sleeping bag, you're gonna be okay. That's not necessarily true, but your warmth, your sleeping bag, is the number one thing you need for survival. That's also debatable. But I'm fairly positive that the number one best tip for surviving bad weather is to really avoid dying. That's what I usually try to do. I dabble. I promise these aren't gonna be all about tents. If you're a hammocker, I'll talk real slow. All tarps and tents have the potential to leak over time. The slightest flaw, the slightest drip can go unnoticed to uh, just leave you waking up with half of your gear soaked in the morning. But this can be fixed. It's important that the sewing seams are sealed. It will crack away over time and need reapplied to make sure water doesn't get through. If you're just now noticing that your tent doesn't have anything over the seams, it's probably a cheaper tent or it's a tent that uh, requires you to do it yourself. A lot of those companies offer it as a service as well. Maybe it's your first tent. I mean, you, you didn't know. You're a recovering hammocker. You're on the right track. Seam sealing is an easy process, but make sure you get the correct seam sealant for your tent material. They are not all universal. You guys know the hammock hate is a joke, right? I always get comments about it and it truly offends people. But I assure you, I don't mind hammocks at all. It's, lit it's literally just for fun. I'm all about positivity, so I'm only gonna say this once. 
you're an idiot. If you notice your tent dripping in multiple places, there's a good chance it needs a new coat of DWR. All tents and waterproof gear rely on this coating and it will wear off and need to be reapplied. Water not beating properly is a good indicator. DWR is available as a wash or in a spray bottle. Very easy and worth doing before you start seeing signs of leakage. This is pretty widely known, but still one of the most prominent issues backpackers deal with. If you get one good blister, it'll take the fun right out of any hike. Whether you prefer boots or shoes, break them in. Put miles on them before you depend on them for an entire trip. Sometimes I'll do long trail runs in brand new shoes, but it's a specific make and model of shoe that I've used many times. Uh, and I've been in the game long enough to know that I can do that. Not everybody can. Does that make me better than you? No. I mean, maybe. You just got dissed. Moisture can cause blisters too, so it's good to dry your feet out any chance you get throughout the day. I know it sounds crazy to some, but these are great tips for everybody, and believe it or not, some of these things keep people from ever going backpacking. I know this because people tell me this. Chafing sucks. I am chafing bad. And it will remind you every step how much it sucks. Oh. Ow. Ow. Apply body glide or Vaseline in problem areas before you hike. You may not need to bring it with you on like a one night trip, uh, regardless of mileage. As an example, I run a lot. So if I run 10 to 20 miles, I'm guaranteed to chafe. If I put body glide on, I have done 100 miles without reapplying and no chafing. I've actually never chafed with body glide. It works. If you wait till you start chafing to apply, you've made a terrible mistake. It's okay, we've all been there. It's good to bring a little bit of lube with you to reapply. You'll never know when you'll need it. I mean, sometimes it gets kind of lonely. You smell. Don't be a bitch, dude. You're just gonna smell, get used to it. Uh, this really bothers some people, and even though I'm okay with wearing my stank for eight days in a row, some people aren't. To reduce sweating and potential stank, be bold, start cold. Starting the hike in less clothing will save you from doing the one mile shed. You will heat up and have to shed layers if you don't start with minimal layers on. This is normal. At the very least, make sure you shed your heavier layers or else you're gonna get really sweaty and smelly and no one's gonna to wanna to hike with you. The key to keeping sweat as a minimum is proper layering. Having clothes that you can mix and match to regulate your body temperature is really important. Don't be the person that has to hike in a heavy coat because you didn't bring a mid-layer. Don't backpack with smelly people or hand them some summit suds and subtly tell them, dude, you smell like shit. Yes, backpacking specific soap. I carry this primarily for poison ivy prevention, but being able to give my pits a little scrub, maybe wash my hands or my face, really comes in handy. It's like resetting the clock on your stank. You guys wanna know how I wash my hands in the backcountry? I've used this stuff for over two years now. I always have a little baggie of this in my pack. It's lightweight, natural, biodegradable, multi-use for body, hair, dishes, clothing. It really can make backpacking just more comfortable. It never hurts to bring a little bit of this with you. Imagine sharing a campsite with a bunch of cute girls and you whip out this fat sack. Hero status. I'm gonna put a link down below for Summit Suds because you guys really should check it out. It's good stuff. If you don't know, this is a portable bidet. You uh, put it on your water bottle and, you know. I have ripped on these things for years, like no mercy. And I'm gonna be the first ever YouTuber to test one live. It's not live, but right now. All right, this could get a little awkward, so to avoid that, I'm gonna get right up on the camera so you can gaze into my eyes as I cleanse my... <laughs> I'm kind of scared of this thing. Um, the basic application of it just leaves me feeling ashamed. I think if someone outside of the backpacking world were to ask me about my routine, I'd probably go ahead and leave this part out. It supposedly works pretty well. I've talked a lot of shit about these, and I feel like it knows. I'm scared. I feel like this is like... It's like a cat, like an animal you're, you're poking and poking just, just to mess with it. Now it's just gonna tear my ass up. I'm just feeling a little vulnerable, I guess. All right, here goes nothing.
That was refreshing. Special thanks to Pika Outdoors for that unique experience. Hey, you know, you hit a home run with the Summit Suds. Let's just, let's just leave it at that. If you're interested in the butthole squirters, they are available on their website. So if you're one of those people that like to spray water on your butt, you weird, so freaking weird. Should I make a whole video on it? It's not my script. Good hygiene, it can make someone more comfortable in an otherwise uncomfortable situation. Sleeping under a rock in the freezing cold with a broken leg, that could suck. But, you know, if you got minty fresh breath, that could get you through the night. Having a clean mouth is a huge morale boost. I don't care who you are, no one likes having that taste in their mouth. One thing I've learned over the past 10 years is many people foreign to America do not understand sarcasm. This makes my life difficult. You only need a couple of these. It's just a lighter, more compact alternative to the little tubes of toothpaste that a lot of backpackers carry. You will probably need to bail on a backpacking trip at some point in your life. You don't think so? I have several times, admittedly, we just cannot prepare for everything. Oh, you, oh, you, you can? What if a eagle swoops down and steals your morning waffle and now you don't have the sustenance you needed to even pack up your tent? tuckered out. Know where the middle point of your trip is so that if you have to hike out, you know the shortest way. Figure this out beforehand so that in the moment of crisis, you can go straight to executing your plan. Also, familiarize yourself with roads that intersect the trail. This could save you hours of hiking and give you the potential for a hitch to the trailhead or the nearest Waffle House. But be prepared. Preparation is key with backpacking. Uh, backpacking problems, they just pop up every, every, everywhere. They pop up er everywhere you least expect it. They're like Dollar Generals. No one asked for it. Welcome to Nashville, Ohio, population 167. Here you'll find nothing but a post office, a general store, and, oh, come on. <sighs> Unbelievable. I will say, they got some pretty good deals. Hopefully your trips will suck less now. These are cool videos, click one or click subscribe right here. 100,000 subs and I'll hike naked. No, I'm definitely not going to do that. Unless you want... No, nobody wants to see that. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.